Hello all, Craig Mack here, Liberty Bell Beekeepers. In the shop again tonight, as I am most nights. Um, just finished up my second custom built hive and I wanted to give you guys a little preview of it and show you what I did. Um, I'm just having some fun. Let's take a look. So this is what, I'm not sure what I'm calling it yet, but this is my Philadelphia inspired hive. Uh, as I've posted pictures of this on social media, if you come to Philadelphia, some things that you'll notice driving around the city, and in a lot of the cities up here in the Northeast, is you always see brick. Most of the residential housing in the cities is brick. Um, we have a lot of wrought iron uh, and a lot of copper. Uh, most of the copper obviously doesn't look like this, brand new. Most of it's pretty oxidized and green, but um, it's one of the kind of staple things that you, you'll you find in Philadelphia as far as architecture goes. Uh, a lot of brick, a lot of wrought iron, um, and definitely a lot of copper. Now, as well as those materials, when you get onto the inside of the homes, um, you'll find a lot of uh, old growth pine uh, for studs. These here are true two by four, Studs that came out of a house from uh, Conshohocken, Pennsylvania, that was built somewhere in the early 1900s. I think 1905 is what I remember uh, being told. Um, and what you see here, these are the lines of the plaster. What they do to, to attach plaster to walls, if you don't know, is they'll nail strips of wood across the studs, which are generally separated, and then on that, they'll skim coat the layers of plaster and the lath acts as like uh, something for the plaster to grip onto and obviously the plaster ends up seeping into the wood and you'll see all those uh, lines on the studs uh, this side is a little bit easier to see uh, so yeah I took those out of that house in Conshohocken and they've been sitting in my shop here for geez like three years and uh had some ideas to use them and decided let's make a let's make a beehive out of one or some of them. So what I did is I took those two by fours, cut them down to two foot long sections, and uh, pinned them together with dowels, as you could probably see here and here. These sections are pinned across with dowels as well. Um, and then the two side pieces are separate. This panel is separate from this panel and they are pinned together as well and also glued uh, with tight bond three uh, for those of you that don't know tight bond is um, in, uh, indirect food contact safe meaning it can be used for cutting boards and uh, tables and, and things like that so it's not there's nothing overly poisonous about it um, and it can be used in those situations uh, this wrought iron came from, I don't even know where, uh, I get a bunch of that kind of stuff. Sometimes we pull them off of old properties or I'll see them in a dumpster somewhere and I go dumpster diving and grab a hold of it. And I basically just took some up, took some from the back of the shop and cut it in half. This three bars, three spiraled bar section was one piece that I just cut in half. Uh, I did purchase some angle iron, um, one and a half inch, uh, to make as the the uh, the base for the the box itself. And I just threw these things on there because I thought it looked kind of cool. Uh, the lid is copper coated aluminum. I did purchase that as well. Copper is. Not easy to come by in sheets uh, and even in pipes. A lot of times uh, it gets removed by people that need a couple of bucks real fast. Um, this will be nice and safe on the roof of the shop. A couple stories up. Uh, some of you might have seen from my previous videos. Here's the back side. Looks a little different, obviously, because I have some different boards and different sections of the boards. These two on the end are, are real light because I had to trim them down. They were long uh, and stuck out past the end of the uh, 
this side here, and I just squared them up. And then I took another piece of that old old pine stud and ripped it in half and uh, glued and stapled that across them as well, just to hold it all in place. I do imagine this is going to get a lot, of, a lot of movement once it gets outside. I put a couple of coats of uh, urethane on it, spar urethane, oil-based. Uh, it's an exterior. Um, I was just trying to protect this thing as best as I could with something clear that'll... Um, you know, let you see what it is actually. It's got a little bit of a gloss to it. It's like a satin finish. Uh, so it's got a little shine, but not too bad. Right here, I was fortunate enough to have a knot hole in the wood that uh, I think is going to serve as a really great entrance um, for the bees, very similar to a wall cavity or a tree cavity. I do have a removable under panel. Uh, that's fastened just with a few screws. I'm probably going to change that to something a little bit easier to get on and off, but I don't plan on opening these custom hives all that much. Uh, the idea behind them is to serve as like a tree cavity cut, uh, kind of situation. Uh, allow the bees to build up, pack it out, and then swarm out of it. And with any luck, I'll be able to catch some of those swarms. Um, Around the shop here, I'm going to put some put some traps up, and uh, I always have extra boxes laying around, and hopefully, like I said, we'll get them. If not, they'll go out into the woods nearby uh, or to somewhere else. There's a lot of old warehouses and structures around here that they could probably do a fine job in, and who knows, maybe I'll get an, a removal call to come and get them. So let me take the lid off. The lid I made... Kind of similar to, to uh, what's it, a French Renaissance roof. Um, I was looking at the Union, Union League building downtown Philadelphia. You've never seen it. It has these, you know, that French Renaissance roof uh, like a lot of the uh, buildings in Philadelphia do. Um, that was loosely based on that. I thought about getting a little bit more ornamental, but... Um, this is what I what I just kept it simple, kept it lightweight. Underneath of this, um, as you can see, I'll pull it over under the table. This one's a little bit heavy, but I got some old one by floorboards that I had pulled off of a, jo uh, a job, a kitchen kitchen floor removal. That was uh, the subfloor was made with with one by twelves, so I took a bunch of those home. And I used it to uh, make the frame. Underneath of this uh, underlayment panel here is a two-inch insulated foam. Uh, the rigid foam board, that stuff there, that purple stuff. So it's an insulated lid, metal covered. I think it should do a pretty good job. I haven't put any latches on it yet to hold it to the box, but that's going to happen soon. And we still got a little bit of time before it's going to go outside anyway. Uh, this box in particular is an eight frame, uh, an eight frame box. Um, these are a deep frame, uh, about 21 inches. It's similar to like a Layens Hive style frame. I added a sheet of foundation at the top. I'm hoping that it inspires them to build these things straight down. And I got a couple of dowels to support the thing. Um, which I did paint some beeswax on once again in the hopes that they'll, um, they'll build straight on the frames. I did add some beeswax along the top to seal this and hold this in. I did use a, a little bit of hot glue initially just to hold it in place until I got the wax melted. Um, that's serving a couple purposes. It's holding this foundation in place, but it's also putting that, that smell in there. Uh, so like I said, I got eight of these frames. Uh, I'll pull them out so I'll show you the inside of the box, which is pretty cool. This one is a pretty, this one ended up bigger than I was initially intending it to be. I was only going to make these five frames, but this material was a two by four. 
Um, so I just kind of went with it as far as its width. I didn't want to chop these boards up. I didn't want to cut them out or cut them down rather. I wanted to leave them whole and it ended up wider than uh, my initial intention, but it worked out just fine. It's an eight frame um, colony, basically equivalent to um, two eight frame deep boxes. Uh, is basically what this what this is as you can see this is the entrance down here uh, and all this wood is raw it's just basically been uh, rubbed down with a wet brush uh, just to remove most of the surface dust and dirt uh, but just lightly I uh, really like I said wanted to kind of keep this natural and let these things be what they are uh, but I did want to take some of that, some of that plaster out of there, which I did. But I can't tell you how many colonies I've cut out of walls that look just like this on the inside. Uh, a lot of times these old walls were they weren't insulated uh, with anything but air, uh, so there's a lot of cavities for bees to to take up uh, take up residence in. And that's that's that. I put the frames back in it. I'm really happy with how well, these things have turned out. I uh, just started beekeeping last year. Um, I did a lot of research, a couple years worth. Uh, this kind of came as a daydream to me. A few years back, I saw some kind of video online or Facebook or one of those things, and I thought, man, that'd be pretty cool. And after two years of contemplation and, and research, I got my own bees last year. Now I do treatment free practices. I don't treat for mites. I don't think that that's the way to go as far as helping the bees get stronger. Um, and with you know, decent management, you can sustain an apiary with, uh, without having to treat for mites. And it's really a highly contested thing and I get into it all the time. But my personal feeling is uh, treatment free is the way to go. And in doing so, you know, some of the research shows that hives and colonies of this size tend to do really well. And that's what I was basing these things off of, um, was kind of who, who, who was having the most success with uh, their colonies and their sizes um, and enjoying uh, success over winter. Um, that's why the walls are nice and thick. As you can see, these are like a legitimate two inch by four inch uh, material. Some of it's even wider than two inches. So it, it should be nice and, and uh, insulated. It should work well for them. But like get, getting back to the research, you know, they're showing these, these uh, uh, you know, 10 frame boxes, maybe max uh, as, as the entire colony that are doing really well. Now with that, you know, you're not stacking box after box after box on top collecting 250 pounds of honey from from one colony but that colony is able to survive and survive on its own and you can still collect honey from it just maybe not in the same volume that you were previously as i mentioned earlier the intention with these boxes is to let them get to that swarm behavior um, i'm looking for it not everybody is because um, i'm trying to keep these as natural as possible and really see what it is um, how they, they work in a situation like this up close. I do run and I have, as of right now, 28 other colonies. Um, they're all in five frame boxes. Most have a five frame uh, medium super on top. I did show them on some of my other videos. Um, you can check out on YouTube, obviously. Um, but that size seems to be a really successful size uh, not only from my mentors bruce rodriguez here in pennsylvania but in some of the other research um, they're getting great overwintering in these smaller colonies um, just efficiency i think is really what it boils down to bees are very very efficient they generally uh take pretty good care of themselves if you let them so yeah that's that's where I'm at. I just wanted to showcase this. I didn't want to make two of this video too long. You get me talking and I can talk all night. Uh, but I really love this part of beekeeping and I really try to inspire uh, 
people to have fun and do stuff like this. It's a great experience. You know, it can be very expensive to be a beekeeper if you're going to go out and buy boxes every year and um, you know have someone else build them or if you feel like you can't do that I'm here to tell you that it's not as hard as you might think there's lots of ways to get help um, if you don't have equipment to make your cuts you can have them cut down at least um, part of the way at the, most of the home stores they will make the cuts for you at a fraction of what it co might cost you to hire somebody, a contractor, to come over and make the cuts. Although if you know somebody that's in the trades, like myself, I'm sure they'd be more than willing to help you um, get and show them what you're doing. You know, when you get into building stuff like these, and even your own boxes, and you tell people that you're a beekeeper, they're instantly interested. Instantly. I can't tell you how many people that... You know, my first beekeeping video I posted on my Facebook page, people that I don't speak with all the time, they now are constantly asking me, sending me a message about the bees, how they doing, put more videos up. It, it really is, it's, it's great. And when you just open up a little bit, you'll get so much help. Um, and you can really make, make so much of your own equipment for really, really a, a fraction of the cost. Um, this stuff is more creative. Obviously, if you have the talent, the tools, the time, the space, this kind of stuff is so much fun. It's, I have all those things, fortunately, at my disposal. Um, but even the simple, basic box hives that you're, you're going to keep bees in, like a Langstroth-style hive, it is, is very simple uh, and a lot of fun to build yourself. And it really kind of gives you uh, an even kind of more intimate relationship with beekeeping in my opinion. I, I haven't done, been doing it that long, but I notice plenty of people that post videos and pictures all winter long of building hives just waiting for spring to get here. Some of these maybe in a warmer climate don't have to deal with winter, but we do here in, in Pennsylvania. We get about seven, six, seven months, about eh, maybe six months worth of, of not summer. Let's put it that way. Uh, probably our, our, our true winter probably lasts about four months. Um, and I know in, the, in that time, people are just itching, uh, itching on the bee pages to get out there and get into their bees. And, and this is a great way to get excited, not only about your bees, but to stay interested throughout the winter, to stay vigilant uh, uh, with your bees, and to uh, just, just stay excited about it and stay having fun. It should be fun. It shouldn't be uh, you know, something that, that drives you crazy, whether you got one hive or you got a thousand. You gotta, you gotta enjoy doing it. If you're not enjoying doing it, then maybe you should find something else that you do enjoy. Now, that'll be the end of this video for today. Just wanted to show this off because I'm proud of it. I love the way it looks. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Got a couple of small things. I'm probably gonna add another entrance to this somewhere. Um, but I'm still on the fence with that. I have a, a few entrances on the other hive back here. And I thought about keeping this one as a single entrance or, or a very small second entrance just for comparison to see how things go as always you can check us out on social media keep an eye out the spring's coming soon we'll be doing lots of work lots of videos um, showcasing a lot of the other things that uh, we do here at mad props fabrications which is my uh, creative outlet here at the shop um, as well as the beekeeping videos. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time.